Hey everybody, welcome back to the the fun fix it or repair daily channel. <laughs> so I'm doing my oil change on my 2022 20, Ford Bronco. Um, so mine is a 2.3 liter. Um, there's also some differences there. It's gonna take about 6.2 quarts. I'm a Mobile One fan. Um, always go with synthetic with these newer vehicles with the tight tolerances on their aluminum blocks. But I have a 2.3 liter and that's gonna take 6.2 quarts. Um, the filter, if you're an OEM person, uh, the Motocraft number for that is FL910S. If you have a 2.7 liter, which I don't, but if you did, it's also six quarts. They changed that online just to be more accurate. And then the filter for those models is the FL2062 Alpha. Um, relatively simple, depending on what model you have. Um, you need to climb under your Bronco, have an oil pan ready. Um, everything is going to be uh, 15. So there is your 15. You climb under. You remove six bolts. So working your way back, you're right underneath your wheels, like dead smack sitting there in the center. There's a bolt here, 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 here. So a total of six of them. Once you remove the bolts, we already loosened a couple of them. This thing, just drops and slide back towards the rear of the vehicle. And that's gonna give you access to this area here. I gotta get my hand up, sorry. This area here. So if you see that thing's kind of over in this area, that's where the oil plug is. And that is also a 15. So once you get underneath your car, it'd be easy if you had a lift have this thing ready because this oil goes everywhere and get your tool on this righty tighty lefty loosey and let this stuff go um just be careful if you've been driving a lot that thing will squirt out and to keep it from squirting all over the place what i suggest doing all right right now i'm underneath the passenger side of the bronco so these things are usually pretty hard um, first uh, time you get that thing just loose, again, it's 15 millimeter, have your, your pan ready because this thing will shoot out. Um, and don't drop your drain plug, but that's not the worst thing in the world. So get this thing off. And remember, if you've been driving a while, keep your hand away from this stuff because it's going to, it'll burn you. And there she goes. So, again, I'm working on cardboard right now, but you really want to keep this thing because once it starts uh, draining from the top, it could go way over. It's kind of satisfying. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm going to go remove the cap right now and I'll show you how that goes. All right. So I remove the cap and I'm about a minute or so into this and it's still draining. Um, I have seen this take a lot longer, um, when the vehicle is kind of cold, like mine was. But uh, it's definitely gurgling now. So I'm gonna give that another three or four minutes um, just to make sure to get it all out of there. Because there's gonna be some in the filter still. All right. Well, I'd also wanna give you a little advice. Always keep a rag handy. Um, so you can clean off your gloves, especially if you're filming yourself. Um, 
the uh, other thing is if you do any type of off-roading, that little bash guard area um, is going to have dirt and sand and stuff. So always try to wear eye protection or just kind of don't put your face directly under there. It's kind of common sense, but you really, <laughs> you got a lot of stuff that's sitting in that pan. Um, again, I'm going to let this drain for another, maybe another minute or two. And I'm going to go over and do the filter now. Uh, just so you guys can see, I'm under the driver's side front tire and that filter is right there. So you just need to grab that and twist it off. Um, it's going to take some force as you kind of have seen in my video. Um, I had a little bit of an issue. Um, I know that when I put it on myself, it's a lot better because I didn't crank down on that thing. And, uh, hopefully this helps you guys. Um, I kind of had to do a hand over hand action where I kind of passed it over top of my, uh, my steering linkage. So I put my right arm underneath the steering linkage, pass the filter over top of it to my right hand, and then was able to screw it on with no issues. But uh, it's raining out and I am done with this project and I just found out that the other video I had wasn't that great. So just wanted to post this back, thanks. All right, so we got the old filter off. Um, it was on there pretty good. I actually had to resort to some tools. Um, as you can see, it just did not want to come off. I know Fram also makes a good one that has a, almost like a, a rubber kind of like rhino line, but it's just a little bit easier to use your hands and get from the side. Um, I kind of already had an accident pulling this thing off because Ford engineered this thing really well. So I've already taken some oil, gone around this gasket. I'm gonna be able to put this on from the side of the car um, what's interesting is, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this or not, it's pretty messy, but there's the tool and you see where this thing is dripping? Cause this, this thing will get you for shock value. So beware you do want yourself out there because once you take this filter off, it's gonna hit you. It ain't feeling good. There is a little bit of oil dripping, but there's like a tunnel, if you will, like a funnel. Um, and that thing was right where I had my, my shoulder, right here. And that goes and connects underneath where your oil filter goes. So when you get underneath, and you're up there unscrewing this thing, um, a little bit of oil comes out and that oil shoots down this thing like a, like a water slide and it just sprays out. Um, so just be careful of that because I don't know why, um, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I'm the only person to ever find that, but yeah, just be careful of that. Um, again, and the dealership cranked down on that thing. So you should just be able to like hand tighten it, just firm it up there. You know, whoever, whoever put that thing on there from the dealership was again, like a Superman or woman. Uh, and they really cranked it on, but, uh, wow. I usually don't have that type of oil spillage, but, uh, you know, hopefully this video kind of teaches you what not to do in order to be ready for it. So I could have put my pan over here, but it was still draining. So I knew there wasn't going to be a whole lot of residual left. So yeah, just cardboard. Um, anyway, let's get this new filter on, get everything buttoned up. All right. So this is taking a little bit longer. This mobile one filter doesn't screw in properly. Um, it'll screw on there, but it's tight. Um, there's something wrong with these threads. Uh, so this M1102 Alpha, don't buy this. I'm going to go back to the hardware, the auto parts store and get a new one. I'm going to stick with the OEM Motorcraft. Um, for whatever reason, this one came off nice and smooth, kind of sprayed me, but the uh, screwing it back on was, was really smooth. So I didn't cross thread anything. That filter's wrong. Um, 
So I'm gonna go back to the store with this model number here and get what I need. And now I'm gonna continue my video. Just got back from the auto place. Um, the uh, right filter you need, should have followed my own directions, was the FL910S, as in Sierra. This mobile one says that it'll work, it does not. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing on. Okay, so the OEM Ford Motor Company filter fit like a glove, went on no problem. Um, sometimes you run into those situations where you have new cars and the parts just don't fit yet. So um, as you can see right now, just take your time filling this thing and it takes 6.2 quarts of oil. Um, and again, this is a 5W30 synthetic blend. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just make sure you don't spill anything on your engine while you're doing this. Uh, I will say that, you know, the new filter, um, if you stick with OEM parts, um, you know what you're going to get, but, uh, the biggest thing is don't ever try to force another part on to, to your vehicle because then you end up doing a lot more damage with the threads. I mean, cross threading, um, one of your oil filters is, is really bad and always make sure you, you get the old gasket off because you don't want to double gasket around that seal. But, uh, yeah, so far, other than the oil filter, uh, it's a pretty straightforward job. Um, I did have a mess when you take the filter off, um, but now that I know that, I know what to expect, and hopefully you guys do too. Um, again, it's pretty straightforward. We're still going here. I already got five quarts in. This makes six. Um, just wanna caution people, even though I bought seven quarts, I'm not gonna put seven quarts in here. It's better just to put the six in um, right off the bat and then start the engine, let it circulate, get the oil in all the little areas that the oil needs to go, and then kind of add a little bit more because you never wanna add too much oil to your engine because then that just adds problems. But again, it's easier to add oil than take it out. Um, and 6.2, quarts is uh is really close to six and i know that there's some old oil in there still so just if you buy seven quarts just know you're going to have to add just a little bit all right we've got it all filled up get your cap twist that on so you hear a little click on there um next you gotta reset your engine oil life. And uh, in order to do that, you gotta go inside the Bronco, turn it on, and I'll show you that step next. Okay, we're back in the Bronco. Start her up. And go into, clear that, because my hood is up. Um, see what I'm doing here? Use your buttons, go back, and go down, one, two, three, four, five, to settings, click OK, go to oil life, click OK, 40 cent remaining, you hold OK to reset oil life. Now it's at 100% and you're good to go. Um, that is, uh, pretty much straightforward. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got to clean up some oil and, uh, you know, hopefully you guys learned something. I know I did. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to do it yourself. Cost about 60, 60 bucks right now, between 60 and 70, I guess. Um, if you have a, a snafu like mine, but, uh, yeah, again, thank you. Bye.